morning, my friends. It is so good to be with you. My name is Don Byers, and I'm your new parish priest. I've been long looking forward to joining you and to sharing ministry with you, and I look forward to many, many years of shared ministry. My friends, it's such a delight to be here, to be able to spend time in prayer, especially in such beautiful weather. My friends, it's also with joy and excitement that we celebrate this weekend, our paternal feast day, the feast of St. Anne. Anne was the mother of Mary, who, as we all know, was the mother of Jesus. And Anne, as some of you may or may not know, was a woman who suffered much in her life, but whom God had favored. And so this weekend in my reflection, in our meditation, we'll consider Anne, but also consider all those persons whom have suffered in life and for whom God has great love for. My friends, I invite you to join us in our worship tomorrow at 10 o'clock, which we will be joining on Zoom, and to join us for conversation at 10.30. I look forward to having a chance to finally be able to visit with you, to talk with you, and to get to know you. And know that over the coming weeks, I will be calling you, reaching out to you, and soon we will open the church so that we can all join together in prayer and worship. Without further ado, let us now pray. Eternal God, the source and goal of all creation, we bless you for your servant Anne, whose daughter Mary was the mother of our Lord. Grant us grace in our succeeding generations to honor the gift of life the young and old together may learn the love whose fruit is life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. prayed and said, My heart exults in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides from my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. 
Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who have full have hired themselves out for bread, and those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Saul and rises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and also exalts. He rises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. He makes them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. Listen to the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Many years ago, while studying theology, I came across a commentary on the biblical book of Job, written by the Latin American theologian Gustavo Gutierrez. Entitled on Job, God Talk and the Suffering of the Innocent, the book is a powerful meditation on God's prefer preferential love for the poor and the marginalized, using the story of Job as its source. For those unfamiliar with the story, Job suffers extraordinary loss and is left abandoned by God in a state of utter dismay and confusion. He was a righteous person, a man of extraordinary faith, and so Job could not comprehend why God would abandon him. Further complicating his plight, Job's friends first tried to console him, only to later accuse him of some wrong that he has not done. In their minds, and the religious mindset of the day, suffering was a sign of divine retribution. If one does wrong, then one suffers, or so they thought. After much pleading with his friends that he has not sinned or lived unjustly, Job turns to God and demands an answer for his suffering. Although God's response to Job isn't entirely helpful, God lashes out at Job's friends for their lack of compassion for their friend and their arrogant belief that they knew the real cause of Job's suffering. God, we learn, is a God who has extraordinary compassion for those who suffer and for the marginalized and oppressed of society. In fact, this is made clear not only in the story of Job, but countless other biblical stories, such as the reading we heard proclaimed today, the story of Hannah. Gutierrez draws on this theme and challenges those of us who call ourselves 
Christian to take heed of this message. He writes that belief in God and God's gracious love leads to a preferential option for the poor and to solidarity with those who suffer wretched conditions, contempt, and oppression, and those whom the social order ignores and exploits. Moreover, he knows, in the God of Christian revelation, grace and preferential love for the poor go hand in hand. They are therefore inseparable in our contemplation of God and our concern for the disinherited of the world. Gutierrez's book profoundly challenged me and has ever since been a book that I find myself returning to frequently. Lately, his words have been on my heart and mind as I continue to read more and more about the horrific abuse and treatment of indigenous children at residential schools across Canada. How is it, I wonder, that Christians could so lose sight of the biblical imperative to defend and care for the poor and oppressed? How is it that we can ignore the cries of the oppressed? This has been a long, a long, this has been long a difficulty in the Christian tradition. Scriptures, scriptures are replete with stories of God's beloved poor ignored and oppressed by those in power. Even our extra biblical literature is full of stories of persons, particularly women, whose voices go unheard by those around them. Despite society's rejection, God favors the oppressed and works through them to reveal God's way of love. God chooses not society's favored persons to do God's work, but those whom society has rejected. Today we celebrate one such person, our patron Saint Anne, whose feast day is traditionally marked on the 26th day of July in our liturgical calendar. There is a long custom of parishes celebrating their paternal festivals on the Sunday closest to the feast day of their patron saint. And so we do today. You see, we Anglicans continue a long and ancient tradition of turning to the holy women and men of old who exemplified the love of God and the joy of the gospel. These persons point us in the direction of God and help us understand to live a life of love and grace. Well, there is very little written about Anne. What we do know about her comes from an early Christian book, the Book of James. Written roughly around the middle of the second century, the text relates to us stories about Jesus' mother, Mary, and her mother and father, Anne and Joachim. According to legend, Mary's mother, Anne, suffered the pain of infertility. At the time, infertility was attributed to women, not to men. As such, women who were unable to bear children were often marginalized and scorned by society. From what we can gather, Anne not only suffered the pain of infertility and the red ridicule of society, her own husband abandoned Anne at a time when she needed him most, when he fled into the desert to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Despite her pain and the rejection she encountered, Anne remained ever faithful to God and turned to God night and day in prayer, asking his favor upon her. Anne, to the surprise of many, eventually gave birth to a child, a baby girl who would later give birth to Jesus. Once again, God's grace comes to us not from those whose society exalts, but from those who are rejected by society. The story of Anne echoes several biblical stories of God working God's grace in those who are rejected by society and exiled from the community. Our first reading today comes from the first book of Samuel, and it relates to us a song of Hannah, another woman who suffered the pains of infertility and rejection. And once again, we hear in the song of Hannah of how God exalts the oppressed and humbles the mighty. 
Hannah, another childless woman who suffered oppression and ridicule for most of her life, ultimately gives birth to her son Samuel, who would later go on to be one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. Her song praises God for God's wonderful way of upending the world's injustice and God's favor for the poor and the meek. As I read and reread the story of Hannah, I noticed a particular detail in the story that I had not carefully reflected upon before. Hannah's cries of pain go unheard by those around her. Although Hannah's husband, Elkanah, deeply loves her, he is incapable of hearing his wife's pain. Instead, he can't even understand why Hannah grieves. As he sees it, he is enough for her, and her grief is unnecessary. Although some biblical commentators speak of Hannah's song as a voice of the voiceless, I couldn't help but see a trend in all the biblical and Christian stories of the rejected, the oppressed, and the marginalized. They are unheard by those around them. Remember, Job's friends couldn't sit and listen to their friend. Instead, they had their theological arguments for why Job was wrong. Recall, too, what happened to Anne. Her husband fled her and left her during a time of great need. He couldn't possibly just be present to his wife and listen to her cries of pain. Well, it may be true that Hannah, Job, and Anne are voices for the voiceless. I wonder if we need to take a moment's pause and ask ourselves whether we hear the cry of the poor and rejected. Why is it that we can't possibly hear the voices of God's beloved poor when they are in need and only seem to think of them long after their prophetic voices open our deaf ears. How long must people suffer before the cries of pain eventually pierce our hearts and transform us? These questions, these are the questions that we, the Christian Church, must grapple with. Our contemplation of God cannot be divided from our listening to and care of the poor and the oppressed. There are also good for questions for us to consider as a parish as we continue our ministry in this community. This parish has a long and faithful history of listening to the voices of the oppressed and to walking with God's beloved marginalized. I feel deeply humbled and honored to begin walking with you on this journey as we continue to listen and discern God's call for us in this context. I know I can learn much from you, and I commit myself to always listen to you, to those in our community, and to all God's beloved poor, particularly those whose voices have gone unnoticed far too long. I pray that we may learn from one another, and that our contemplation of the Holy One of God, Jesus Christ, may continue to inspire us to bring the community together for the good and work with God's grace in feeding the hungry and uplifting the poor and the oppressed. And may all the holy ones of God, Hannah, Job, and Anna, pray for us and our ministry. Amen.
In the time after Pentecost, may the breath of the Holy Spirit enliven and renew our parish as we welcome our pastor, Don Byers. Like the apostles, may we at St. Anne's be open to fresh challenges and to new ways of living our commitment to each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we celebrate the feast of our parish patron, St. Anne, let us pray that in this time of renewal, we may live our community life in the generous spirit which she embodied as Mary's mother and the grandmother of Jesus. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for those who have safeguarded our lives during the pandemic. Let us pray that vaccines will be available for all, both in Canada and throughout the world. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to find creative paths toward a just economic recovery for our city. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Holy Spirit that we may discern her gifts given to us for the building of God's kingdom. May the flame of creativity inspire artists in every field men and women of science, farmers, office workers, and laborers. May all work be blessed in God's eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the mystical body of Christ, pray that we may embrace every race, religion, and nation as beloved members of God's kingdom. Let us pray for the leaders of Canada and of the world and for the work of peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the apostles received the gifts of tongues, let us ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of listening to the stories which haunt our city in the words of immigrants and refugees, of those without homes, and those who bear painful emotional burdens. Let us listen and respond with care and attention. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us contemplate with awe and wonder the mystery of creation from the starry heavens to the humble life of plants. In the season of rebirth, let us pray for all nesting birds and animals with their young. May their revelation of God's love inspire us to protect and care for the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Hello, and thank you for joining our online service. This Sunday marks a new beginning for St. Anne's as we welcome Father Don Byers to his inaugural Sunday service as our new priest in charge. Over the next few weeks, the wardens will be working closely with Father Don as we develop plans to transition back to on-site worship. So stay tuned for further details. For those of you who've enjoyed our online format or have found it more accessible, worry not, we plan to keep an online option available. Once again, I would like to thank you for your continued financial support of St. Anne's. As you know, summer is typically a slower time for donations. So as you make your summer plans, please keep St. Anne's in mind. Okay, that's all from me. Keep safe and God bless. Thank you, my friends, for joining us for our prayer and worship on this online video for this weekend, the Feast of St. Anne. It's such a delight to be with you. And as I said earlier in the video, I am so delighted to begin ministry with you. My friends, know that I'm here for you. Know that I'm here to listen, to walk with you, and to pray with you. And I look forward to many years ahead of shared ministry. My friends, in the coming weeks, it is our hope and desire to once again reopen our doors to public worship. I'll be talking with our wardens in the coming weeks to discern when and how we'll do that. And we'll be posting that information on our website. Also, my friends, I invite you to join us tomorrow, Sunday, for our celebration of Holy Eucharist at 10 o'clock from the church, as well at 1030 for a time of discussion and reflection on the readings and a time to be able to pray together as a group. I hope you do join us. To learn how, visit our website at saintanne.ca for more information. My friends, as I said before, I'm here for you, and I look forward to getting to know you, to working with you, and to serving you. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out and call me, email me, whatever may be best for you. Know that I'm here for you. And I welcome all of you to the parish of St. Anne, and I hope you share with us in our ministry together. May God bless you, and may God keep you always. Take care, and God bless.